Trump insurrection spreads to the sciences. Trump is making huge waves at the moment with many of his nominations appointing essentially outsiders to pretty well everything. And science is no exception. And if you can hear a lot of noise, it's because it's raining up here in North Queensland. Anyway, it's going to be an interesting four years, especially for those high up in the science institutions and those people who might be working on climate, environmental issues, and quite a few of the medical science issues too. They are going to be subject to a huge amount of scrutiny and that can never be a bad thing. Now, Trump is clearly not a believer in cataclysmic climate change. Otherwise, his favourite catch cry would not be drill, baby, drill. Drill, baby, drill. Drill, baby, drill. We will drill, baby, drill. And like most Americans and his right-hand man, Vivek Ramaswamy, he can see that climate change is being used as a tool in the culture wars. In a Rasmussen poll, for example, 60% of Americans agreed with Ramaswamy's comment that climate change has become a religion that is actually nothing to do with climate and is really about control. Now, this is a massive and understandable vote of no confidence in the cataclysmic assertions of climate science. It is not actually necessarily meaning that these people don't worry a bit about climate or that humans are not having any influence on climate. But what it does mean is that people can see that scientists are acting like ideologues. And this is one of the reasons why we need a little bit of scrutiny. In fact, a lot of scrutiny, which is going to happen under Trump, I have no doubt. Now, an even worse statistic about the trust in science was published in a survey by the American Medical Association, which found that trust in physicians and hospitals had collapsed from 71% down to only 40% over the course of the COVID-19 epidemic. And who can blame people for that collapse in trust, given that there were genuine conspiracies by government authorities to cover up things such as the role of the Wuhan Institute of Virology in the pandemic, the incorrect claims of that vaccines prevented transmission, and the flawed pseudoscience behind lockdowns. People have lost faith in these institutions, and that is a bad thing. Not that they've lost faith, but they're actually, in many cases, untrustworthy. Now, in the first term of Trump, he was unsuccessful in bringing about any useful scrutiny about the more extreme climate environmental sciences issues. He had a guy called Scott Pruitt, who was his first environmental protection agency boss. And Pruitt was a fan of the so-called red teams to challenge science behind many of the environmental regulations. He also consulted with a fellow called Will Happer, who I know personally is a phenomenal scientist and a member of Americans elite Jason group. Phenomenal scientist who's also a climate skeptic. However, Trump was pretty well vigorously opposed by all the Washington insiders and indeed from within his own Republican Party. So his skepticism about these sorts of things really came to nothing. But things have changed and he now pretty well owns the Republican Party and all le levels of federal government and any doubts that Trump means to do something about the failing science institutions should be dispelled by his nomination of Robert Kennedy Jr. RFK to run the Health and Human Services. Now, Kennedy is well known over many years for saying that the American medical sciences are plagued by corruption, stemming from the enormous amount of money and influence on government regulations. And I can't see how that can be doubted too much. Now, Kennedy says he wants to return these agencies to, quote, their rich tradition of gold standard evidence-based science. And he stated, I'm not an anti-vaccine, I just want good science. Now, a lot of the media regard RFK as some sort of nutcase, and he kind of is, actually. But sometimes you need a different type of person to shake things up. And in my opinion, RFK will ask a lot of hard questions that really need asking and answering. But RFK is just the beginning of this insurrection in the health sciences because Trump has nominated Marty Macri to the Food and Drugs Administration. He's well known for having crossed stores with the medical establishment over the COVID lockdown policies. And Trump has also nominated Surgeon General Jeanette Nishawat, who has been strongly critical of the American uh, Academy of Pediatrics over using puberty blockers to treat children, actually mutilate children with gender dysphoria. 
So this is a huge advance, but for me, the even bigger one is the appointment of Professor Jay Bhattacharya to the National Institute of Health. Now, I did a, a video on Bhattacharya, his work blowing the whistle on the insane, unscientific lockdown policies that damaged millions of children. Well, that caused him to be utterly hated by the science establishment. They tried to have him crucified. And now he's going to be their boss. Now, it turns out that Bhattacharya is really a class act and a thoroughly decent person. So, although he might be tempted to have a little bit of <laughs> retribution, I don't think he'll be like that. I think he'll be a, an absolutely first-rate uh, appointment. Now, all these uh, RFK, Bhattacharya, Macri, they know where the bodies are hidden. So... <laughs> I'm sure we're going to see a great deal of information released, for example, about the COVID uh, situation and also the, the transgender stuff, which is going to be released and it's going to be very interesting. I can't see how this, can, this sort of scrutiny can be a bad thing at all. And in a sense, this shakeup of the American sciences, which is going to happen, is really a science red team sent into challenge and challenge is central to science. Now, of course, most areas of science are obviously rock solid and nobody doubts them. So nobody doubts Newton's laws of motion. They work. They've been challenged a billion times every time you fly in an aeroplane or when Elon Musk's rocket catcher works. Industrial science like that is audited by the red team we call cold hard reality. But in many areas of science, and medical science as well, or climate science, environmental science, where success and failure are not obvious, better systems are needed to stop groupthink, ideology, or pure, unadulterated self-interest from influence the scientific wisdom. Now, top amongst these systems is ensuring there is guaranteed debate, checking, and auditing, which is largely what RFK Kennedy is advocating. Now, in this regard, scientists are 180 years behind accountants, 300 years behind lawyers and politicians, which is pretty embarrassing. You see, auditors are really accountancy red teams. Defence lawyers are legal red teams. The leader of His Majesty's most loyal opposition is a political red team. Now, all these innovations are examples of the wonderful developments of the institutions in Western civilizations, especially our British sub-branch, and they happened because there was an obvious systemic deficiency which needed correction. Come into the science in a minute. So the compulsory auditing of public companies started at least theoretically in 1844 in the UK. Arguably, it took a century to become effective, but it happened because, well, companies were defrauding investors. Similarly, defence lawyers were not allowed in criminal trials until the 1730s. The accused were not very good at defending themselves. It became obvious that was the case. So they made this innovation. Australia did not formally recognise or even pay the federal opposition leader until the 1920s. So it can thus be seen that formalising official red teams, which are so important, has been a long process in society. And now it is science's turn. And it's raining even harder and the frogs are croaking as well. So if you want to like and subscribe, go ahead and do it. We'll adjourn for a second. Now in Australia, we need red teams to scrutinise the science behind the Great Barrier Reef and how it ended up with record amounts of coral after supposedly being almost destroyed probably about a dozen times in the last six decades. It always seems to be right on the verge of extinction. Add to that the bushfire and forest management the COVID response, the closure of our fisheries, the transgender cult, the climate and energy policy, throw in whether our education and social science research institutions have done far more harm than good. Is there any chance that they have been affected by groupthink ideology or pure self-interest? So anyway, I'm incredibly optimistic because uh, I think what you're seeing now with Trump, Ramaswamy, Kennedy, Bhattacharya and the others, they really are going to start to begin to make American science even greater than it is at the moment. And I wish them the best of the luck because the opposition will be fierce. 
but it really is the, the beginning of a revolution, I think, in science that's been needed for many years.